Hello everyone. Hello. Hello everyone. Can you Hello. see my screen well? Yes. Yes. Very well. Okay. Well, not only for you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for the audience, thank you very much to join in the lecture series for disaster waste management. And today I'm going to talk about the handling and managing the hazardous waste. And well, I think uh, I cannot see the audience here, but I, okay, uh, my name is Tomonori Shigaki. And yes, I will go to my self introduction page. Yes, and my name is Tomonori Shigaki again. And from National Institute for Environmental Studies in Japan and working in the Center for Material Cycles and Waste Management Research. And I have 20 years research ex experience in the solid waste management field, not only, always only in disasters, but uh, any kind of the solid waste management and working. And in the bottom part, uh, I think you can see that some of the uh, my articles that is relating to the disaster issue. So please refer the after my lecture, if you are interested in. And not only for me, but I'd like to announce that today we have invited the students from Kyoto University as the representative of audiences. So they will join the activity in this lecture and also support to manage the lecture. And also maybe the audience question might be collected by them. So just, I'd like to introduce them all. And yeah, today's topics and aim and scope of this lecture about the hazardous disaster waste is to understand the importance of safe handling of hazardous waste in disaster occasion. And to understand the importance of management of hazardous materials and substances and to understand the preparedness actions for hazardous waste before disaster strikes. So let's move on my uh, lecture. And the first topic is about the hazardous waste in natural disasters. I'd like to uh, share my uh, one of the uh, famous picture uh, that is uh, the picture the strike is struck by tsunami in 2011 and I'd like to give the all audience for 30 seconds to find out the potential hazard from this disaster occasion I think this is very emotional picture and uh, maybe you feel very sad, but not to concentrate so much about this issue, but try to find out the potential hazard from this, uh, this field or this picture as well. I say that the short 30 seconds. So uh, I think that is any comment or uh, maybe I, I can not receive any question about this, but maybe 20 seconds remain or 15 seconds remaining. I think this is this part this is picture, not so much. It's seen, yes, please. Uh, this picture seems very uh, confusing to some of us because there are a lot of things. So I feel like it's a little difficult for us to see which one is hazardous, right? What do you think, Masasa? Um, yes, the sensei, um, I think everything that strikes a uh, toxic substance. Ah, uh, you mean that that is very, uh, mixed well. I mean, uh, it's not the, the simple or pure substance, but uh, it's uh, mixed very much by damage of the tsunami. Yes, you're right. In imperfect, you're right. Yes, but uh, yes, but we should find out the very important part, more hazardous part, part or portion to remove to make this environment uh, for much safety, and of course not only for the resident but also for the some recovery activity as well. Well, uh, 
there's maybe this, it is still difficult but the if the okay student if you can find some potential hazard or possible hazard so sir how answer. about some uh, cars electronics batteries how about mm -hmm. if there that is hard this west in the future yes because i, I see some cars some cars yes you're there. right and some maybe the electronics, uh, like uh, venture or something. Uh, yeah. Yes, you're right. In the the one is correct. That Automobile that is uh, upside down here, and as well as the ship over there. These automobile or ship or any other uh, things may contain the fuel or oil uh, that may be spilled out to the environment, and also that may still include the battery or some, you know, some part of the home appliances as well. So that is also the kind of dangerous materials to handle well. Yes, you're right, that is the point. Thank you so much. Any other potential, maybe that's all. Okay, I will go through. The one is that, that here you can see that the electric wire cable or some parts of the electricity or power uh, power cable, uh, and, and also very dangerous in terms of the some uh, electric electric shock uh, by the remaining electricity as well. So this is also need a special care to handle or remove this part or this waste as well. And also, in fact, there are some of the small but very important uh, potential hazard here, such as the decentralized wastewater treatment or decentralized domestic wastewater treatment plan. In, especially in countryside in Japan, uh, sometimes the, we have the in-house domestic wastewater treatment plan. Or maybe in developing country, you uh, well understand about the septic tank to treat your or night soil or human waste. So that is also the kind of the source of the potential pollution of such kind of the night soil or human waste in disaster situation. And it will deteriorate the sanitary condition and may damage the living environment. This is also very important potential hazard. And more directly dangerous materials must be the pressurized gas cylinder here. I'm sorry, this is very small, but uh, this is also very dangerous and need a special care to handle with this. And we can see that there's some putrescible fishery debris here because this is a kind of the uh, uh, nearby the uh, fishery village or fishery port. So that uh, we have a much more the factory to produce uh, the seafood or some fishery product. And this producible material uh, might be easily, uh, is easily fermented and to generate uh, some explosive gas as well as the odorous materials. So these materials must be also, uh, maybe the such explosive gas may cause the uh, uh, some explosion or fires, so this this must be removed very soon. And this is a collapsed collapsed building already, and this old public building may contain the asbestos. It is a, a famous a dangerous material, substance uh, hazardous substances. So uh, anyway, uh, this is very difficult to find out a very simple potential hazard, but we should take care about much things about these potential hazard in disaster situations. And I'd like to show that some properties of the hazardous waste and to consider about the hazardous waste in disaster occasion, we can categorize the two groups of the hazardous waste. One group is that the waste that is also regarded as a hazardous waste in normal situation or the, even before disaster, this is also considered about the hazardous waste. It must have the waste that possess the toxicity or flammable materials or explosive substances or the properties of the infectious materials. And we need the appropriate legislation for the managing these 
uh, waste and it must be required uh, the development must be required before disasters and once disaster strikes we can uh, treat this kind of the waste in the normal way or to find out the treat the, the, the treatment company or transporting company to uh, ask them to treat this is uh, one group and another group is that the some uh, material or some goods that is not uh, apparent hazard in normal time or i should say that is more appropriately controlled in normal situation but once disaster strikes uh it may cause the uh, to explode expose to the living environment it is a group of the pressurized bottle or asbestos a fuel of oil in automobile or human waste or night soil is the one of the groups in normal time they are well controlled but once disaster strikes it will spill out or expose to human living uh living environment so we need to special care uh, or we need a certain scheme to control this kind of the potential hazard uh, in disaster time. So I, I must summarize the properties of the hazard uh, in terms of the waste. In normal time, the main properties of the uh, hazardousness uh, is the explosive and flammable toxicity and spontaneous combustible and oxidative and corrosive and infectious this is a kind of the uh, certain way uh, to be controlled in normal time uh, in terms of the hazardous waste uh, and if we consider about the disaster situation we uh, should consider about the additional hazard in this disaster situation the one is that the threat to life or threat to the survival, such as the uh, waste heat collapsing or some ignition or the spreading the fire. This is a kind of the more direct threat to life or direct threat to the resident itself. So we need to uh, resolve that kind of the, the barrier. And other group is that the threat to the health of the human especially in the medical waste or infectious waste uh, that would be generated by the damage of the hospital or damage by the special or storage or special treatment companies. Uh, or that it may also uh, connect to them, but the deterioration of sanitary environment is uh, also essential hazard uh, for residents. It is uh, linked to the damage of the septic tank or damage of the sewer line or damage of the treatment plant. And yes, the, some exposing to asbestos or toxic gas must be also considered to be the uh, dangerous issue or threat to health in disaster situation. And then we also consider about the threat to the environment. Uh, such as the pollution or contamination of the soil environment or water environment or atmospheric environment as well. To consider about the hazardous disaster waste, uh, uh, we should all consider about the handling or treatment of the hazardous disaster, disaster waste in line with the recovery of, from the disaster. So uh, when we consider about the very initial phase, just after the disaster, uh, that is a, a phase of the searching or rescuing, and that requires a certain emergency relief. In this phase, uh, we need to remove uh, the hazard uh, regarding the debris or uh, waste quickly in order to avoid the secondary damage for residents and for rescuing person as well, and try to remove the barrier for the rescuing activity. And in the initial recovery phase, that is coming after the rescuing phase, that is a phase for stabilizing or returning to daily life for residents. 
damage the resident or evacuate us as well. In this phase, we need to move on to the prompt treatment of hazardous waste that may block the recovery activities, or such as the recovery of the infrastructure or uh, removing the total waste or something like this. And then we, when we move on to the substantial recovery phase, we need to consider about the long-term rebuilding of the urban area or future development, or start to consider about the preparedness of the next disasters. So in this case, we must ensure the treatment of the hazardous, but the inert hazardous waste that may contain the yeah, hazardous substances, materials, that must be come after the prompt treatment. I will uh, explain more detail about the, each phase of the hazardous disaster waste treatment. First phase about the fast removal of a hazard. We need the quick removal and quick treatment with high priority on the potential infectious waste or flammable explosive uh, pressurized gas cylinder and putrescible waste. I already explained the reason the putrescible waste may generate explosive gas or including the biogas. And careful management for night soil or human waste must be necessary uh, for keeping the evacuated sanitation. And some of the buildings that is already collapsed or some demolished uh, building uh, may contain the asbestos or heavy metal treated wood or gypsum board. And gypsum board is the kind of the source, uh, potential source of the generation of the toxic gas. So these waste must be quickly removed from the residential or area or highly damaged area to the other area, like a temporary storage site or, or, or the disposal site. But I understand that the not all municipality or city have a certain capacity to do such kind of urgent reaction. So in case of the urgent situation without enough capacity, at least we should start to consider or remove or transfer uh, the infectious waste from water sources because uh, it, it, it will affect, it, it, it will be effective to stop the spreading the such kind of the infection or infectious source to spread out to the, the other environment. And also uh, keeping the flammable waste or explosive waste away from the fire. This is very safety, uh, from the safety reason to stop the ignition or stop to spreading the fire as well. So these are very essential, but if the uh, uh, the some damaged area doesn't have enough capacity. At least we should start to consider about the very lowest but minimum requirement of the safety. And in the face uh, of the prompt treatment of hazardous waste, uh, we should consider about the treating the hazardous waste that may inhibit the recovery activity. Uh, there are ways that may contain about the automobiles or home appliances or the uh, 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 or other materials that is not treated well uh, in the quick recovery phase. And since the automobile may include a fuel or oil or battery, and home appliances also include a battery or some uh, gases a cooling agent, something like this. So these parts should be removed and treated appropriately or to be recycled uh, for other part in ordinary way. And I hope that the treatment scheme must be already developed in normal time so that we can smoothly uh, treat in disaster waste, uh, disaster situation. But of course, uh, if uh, we don't have uh, uh, enough capacity uh, in some area, yeah, at least we should start to avoid the fire or ignition. 
uh, from the automobile or from home appliances by removing the oil of removing fuel and battery. And especially the handling of battery is very sensitive but very important in the disaster situation. And then this is the last phase and to ensure the treatment of inert hazardous waste. We need uh, some rigid, stately treatment of inert, inert waste, uh, such as a demolition waste, or, or over the, uh, such as all the building debris that may possess the potential hazard. And very important thing is that, uh, yeah, since these uh, demolition waste or inert waste must be must not be so much reactive, so sometimes it keeps very long time in the temporary storage site or some other damaged area, but it may uh, spread or it may pollute the environment uh, without any consciousness, so that uh, we uh, we don't have to allow to this uh, inert waste to keep very long time, but it's better to treat as soon as possible if the capacity will recover. And also the yeah, temporary storage site uh, must be used for keeping the hazardous waste. But uh, if we use the other kind of area uh, that may be occupied by hazardous waste must be uh, removed as soon as possible. After the brief introduction of the hazardous waste management, I'd like to move on to the practical case. Uh, today's uh, topic is asbestos. But, but before we, uh, I'm going to move on the next part, I'd like to receive the question from the audience. Is there any specific question in this first half? Ah, uh, yes. Excuse me, um, Isigaki Sensei. Oh, yes. Um, um, I have one question. Um, are there any differences uh, between um, Japan and developing countries uh, regarding the disaster recovery and disaster waste treatment uh, at the faces of, uh, I think it uh, was shown on uh, slide number nine. Thank oh, okay. you. Okay, thank you very much. And I think uh, this is uh, depends on all the comparison of the capacity of the country or capacity of the municipality and the scale of the disaster or type of disaster. And yes, uh, which slide I, I'm not sure but very well, uh, but in general, yeah, that the phase requiring the emergency, re emergency relief. Okay, maybe. Yeah, okay, this is better. In general, in developing country, there's this initial phase, searching phase or rescuing phase may be prolonged because of the lack of the capacity. I mean that, uh, so that the fast removal uh, phase uh, is sometimes prolonged. We need much time to finish this phase. But this is not only for developing country, but even in Japan, for example, once the uh, massive tsunami attack uh, to Japan coast, uh, we are facing to that uh, lack of the capacity due to the strong damage. In this case, if, even in Japan, uh, uh, we are facing to prolongation of this uh, initial recovery or initial phase uh, to move on to next phase. So this is not only a, a, the difference between the developing country and developed country, but it is, uh, due, uh, it is causing due to the capacity and the damage or scale of the disaster as well. Or maybe if you, if you remember the disaster case in Haichi, uh, the country was striked by the strong earthquake. Uh, yeah, in that country, uh, they are, uh, don't have enough capacity. And I, I remember that the international rescue is our uh, international support is also delayed. And so that they are not uh, 
finish the, this fast phase, emergency phase. And even uh, 10 years has passed, more, more than 10 years has passed, they are still struggling to recover uh, from the disaster damages. So anyway, so that at least uh, this is a very, uh, uh, my answer is that it depends on the capacity and the scale of the, the disasters. But at least I believe that preparedness may reduce the certain time or, uh, or may enforce the capacity uh, to handle with the problem. Okay, this is my uh, answer. Thank you very much, Sensei. Okay. Uh, Shigaki Sensei, we have two more questions from the audience. Uh, from okay, Mr. Limit Abiyo, to, okay, limit to one. <laughs> Okay, so uh, just uh, the first question that Mr. Abiyodin Afolabi asked is, is there any global intervention, finance, equipment, and manpower for the removal of these hazardous waste that escape into water bodies or ocean? Well, I am not sure that uh, they have the global uh, scheme or alliances, but at least the like uh, some uh, uh, international organizations should have the uh, pre pre preparing a certain group to support uh, one one by one. I mean that the, not not the international group, but I think they are they have a certain relationship to any time uh, once the disaster strikes, uh, they will have the certain system to send the rescuing or some supporting team. Uh, to removing the debris, uh, as well as uh, uh, treating, uh, managing the hazardous waste. But uh, at the very uh, last minute, uh, it, it, finally it will uh, be treated in a local uh, uh, facility, a local company. So it is very important, essential to enhance that capacity of the local uh, country country specific treatment scheme or management scheme of the hazardous materials. Thank you so I much. think uh, we can receive many questions now, but I, I, this is just the first half. So I'd like to move to uh, next topics. And if we have remaining time after, the, after my lecture, we will uh, come back to the question time. It is okay? No answer, but maybe okay. Yes, thank you so much. Sorry for audience, but uh, I still remain in the 20 more uh, slides, so I'd like to move on to the next part about the asbestos waste as a one of the uh, representative uh, hazardous waste. And I just give you a brief introduction about the asbestos. The, the asbestos is the natural fiber, naturally occurring of fiber, fibrous minerals with a very small diameters with a fine needle-like shape. And this small and needle shape uh, may damage to the human, uh, human health such as the asbestosis or the lung cancer. So now we know that it gives a very strong damage. But before that, this is considered about the uh, excellent insulator and also known as a highly high heat resistant material. So it is uh, commonly used uh, in many fields, but especially as the building material for many years. And now we know that health hazard of the asbestos. So uh, the use of asbestos as building materials is illegal in many countries, but not all countries. And I should say that the most old building, most building constructed before 1980s may contain asbestos if we don't have any removal activities. And unfortunately, many developing countries uh, still support 
to use asbestos as building material because they don't have uh, uh, other uh, materials uh, to be used in buildings. And in some countries still keeping the mining activity of the asbestos. So this is not a past problem, but still ongoing issue. And there are two types of asbestos or asbestos waste. One is the asbestos consisting waste. That is the waste or material that consists of asbestos or almost 100% asbestos. Like asbestos using in the spray coating of the roof or floor or something. And also insulating materials to cover the pipe or cover the uh, uh, board, a building board. And these are considered about asbestos consisting waste. And we need to special care to remove this asbestos, cons asbestos consi consisting waste before we start the demolition work of the building. And even, uh, of course, we need to wear the certain uh, safety gear to work on the, such demolition work uh, if, if we know that uh, there is uh, asbestos consisting waste. And after the demolition work, even such the used safety gear must be also considered as the uh, polluted by or contaminated by asbestos. And the safety gear must be also treated, handled as the kind of asbestos containing waste. And I already mentioned about asbestos containing waste, but the other group is asbestos containing waste. And it is a material or some products that uses the asbestos, such as asbestos insulating board, asbestos, asbestos cement board, and asbestos cement pipe. These are uh, very famous products that contain asbestos, mainly contain 10% of or 15% of asbestos in the products. And when asbestos waste will be generated in disasters occasions? Yeah, of course, the asbestos, mater asbestos materials have been used in as the building materials. So once building crops, or the, when the demolition works of, of the buildings, uh, the asbestos waste must be uh, generated. So this is uh, generated in the, uh, just after the disasters, as well as uh, the phase of the recovery activity. Because uh, some of the uh, not collapse, but certain damaged uh, building must be demolished during the recovery activity, in the recovery phase. And that to, uh, regarding with the disaster types, yeah, the earthquake is the most major uh, disaster that may generate the asbestos waste because we know that our earthquake is giving the strong damage to the building. But not only earthquake, any other disaster that may give the damages to the building or to the structure should have a potential to generate the asbestos waste. So it, it also will depend on the scale of the disaster. Like uh, even the tsunami, flooding, a typhoon or cyclone uh, should have, uh, if, if, if the big, uh, big disaster strike, and uh, of course, the building must be damaged and the asbestos waste must be exposed, even the volcanic er eruption as well. So I'd like to move on to the treatment process of the asbestos waste in disasters. We, uh, I should start from the, some activity in normal life, I mean at normal time before disasters. The preparedness uh, for the asbestos waste must be very essential. First of all, uh, I'm not sure uh, your country is prohibiting for using asbestos waste or not. But anyway, most of the country doesn't have the certain record or the, some building list that may use the asbestos. So first of all, in, for the prepar preparation, in before disasters, 
we should start to identify the building that they use the asbestos. But uh, it is not so much di uh, difficult things. Uh, we should consider about uh, when the building uh, has been, uh, that the, the building was built, and also refer to the such kind of a record or document uh, asking to the company person. And also we can directly measure or survey to, to survey for each building or structure as well. So that we, we need to know, we, we can make a map or we can not make a certain list of the building that may uh, have potential hazard of the asbestos. And it may be used for the, some um, removal activity, uh, activity for removal of asbestos in normal time. And this is also essential to reduce the the risk uh, of the asbestos in disaster time. And not only remove the asbestos, yes, we need to establish the management uh, system, management scheme of the asbestos. Uh, it, it will con not only uh, for the, the treatment of asbestos, but also the safe transportation or safe storage and safe disposal as well. And to consider about these schemes, the uh, preparation of the working plan for treating the asbestos waste must be important. And also uh, preparation for the, some equipment, including the safety gear, uh, must be essential. And the, what to do in emergency relief phase? The most important thing is that the alerting to the rescue crew, rescuing person or resident about the risk of asbestos or threat of asbestos. So this is so that if we already have identified the existence of the asbestos in the building or in the community, we can easily distribute that kind of information. And as well as distributing safety gears uh, especially in high risk communities or the rescuing persons. And this is very important to moisturize the potential asbestos waste because that is very small needle shaped fiber. So once it is dried, it is uh, spread out and, and floating in the atmosphere so that the moisturizing may reduce a, such kind of the, emission of the asbestos fibers. And in initial recovery phase, we can start to uh, know and treat the asbestos uh, waste. And first of all, uh, of course, we have a certain uh, pre preliminary identification or preliminary recording of the existence of asbestos, if possible. But in this space, we also directly survey the exposing or ex exposed asbestos in the environment. And also uh, surveying the building damage or structure damage that may use the materials containing asbestos. I think that asbestos consisting waste must be more easy to find out because they are uh, almost using like sprayed asbestos or insulating material may be easy to find by the observation. But asbestos containing waste, such as asbestos cement or asbestos cement pipe, must need a certain surveying scheme to identify or to find out. But anyway, in this phase, we also uh, should take the emergency measures to prevent or to avoid the scattering or emission of the, uh, the asbestos fibers as well. So important, the removal of the asbestos and all the, if we don't have enough capacity of the removing asbestos very soon, we need to cover, temporal cover for asbestos waste to stop the emission to the atmosphere. In this phase, uh, we, it is also important to provide the information to residents about the, now they are treating asbestos or they are now finding asbestos so that residents can 
uh, take uh, enough uh, measures uh, to away from the such kind of the risk of exposing to the uh, asbestos. Important thing is that yes, this is a very common picture of the demolition waste. But once this kind of the demolition, uh, mixed demolition waste generate, yeah, it is hard to identify where is the asbestos containing waste. I would also say that, but I, I, I don't give the 30 seconds anymore, but uh, it is very difficult to find out. But somewhere we can identify the potential asbestos containing waste. So uh, the important thing is that uh, don't generate such kind of mixed demolition waste. But uh, before that, uh, we should carefully remove or identify and remove the asbestos consisting waste and asbestos containing waste. So that the, any kind of the recovery activity uh, can be more safety. And next part in what to do in substantial recovery phase. And if the municipality or city already can prepare the working plan of treatment, just implement that, that thing. Of course, that working plan is must be adjusted to the real situation of the damaging material. But anyway, at least we know that how much asbestos waste might be generated, how much treatment capacity must be needed. And in this phase, we can start the demolition of building of structure very carefully. Of course, if we can identify this is the asbestos free building, it is okay. But once we know that some potential of the asbestos using in some buildings. So first thing is that asbestos consisting material must be removed in advance before it becomes mixed waste. And board, I mean that asbestos, uh, yes, board pipes or other materials that may contain asbestos should be carefully removed manually after wetting. Wetting means that uh, moisturizing is also very important in this work as well. And even in some, de uh, some developing countries, uh, they, they already uh, developed uh, some manual, specific manual for handling, safety handling of the asbestos waste. In this case, please follow that kind of existing manual. This is the best way. And once uh, we have the asbestos, especially in the mixed disaster debris, yeah, this is very a troublesome issue because even uh, the mixed disaster debris, uh, it may contain the asbestos consistent waste. I mean that 100% asbestos may be contained in the mixed disaster debris, even though this is very difficult to find out. But uh, this contamination situation uh, may uh, lead to some trouble. So anyway, it is recommended to remove the, these asbestos immediate, immediately because the mix, once mixed disaster debris dried, the yeah, same things, the, the asbestos fiber may disperse and emit to the atmosphere. So uh, uh, it is very important issue to remove or uh, to know the asbestos existence in the mixed disaster debris. Mixed disaster debris is, uh, I think this is not a common word. So I'd like to give some example about the mixed disaster debris. Uh, the major one is a tsunami debris in Japan. And once tsunami strikes to the field or the urban cities, it is just not uh, consist by the, some building damages, but also it may include some sludges or soils. Every kind of the debris may be mixed together. So in the case of tsunami debris, in, 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 this is the case in Japan, and the tsunami debris will be tried to be used for recycled construction materials because uh, we try to reduce uh, or to, to save the capacity of the waste treatment in, this, in the damaged area. 
so that we implement certain washing and fractionation factory to produce the, some materials for constructions. So that is fine. This is their successful story. But together with that, if the, the tsunami debris may be polluted by asbestos, it is very difficult to remove out in washing or fractionation processes. So the in advance removal of the asbestos must be essential to keep the safety condition or safety of the working condition and also to keep the quality of the recycled material as well. It means that uh, if uh, we know that uh, polluted, uh, asbestos polluted debris, we should remove that part from the, the mixed disaster debris. Uh, we need uh, more special care about that. And in the final phase, in the substantial recovery phase, we should consider about more practical uh, way of the storage and collection and transportation and treatment final disposal. During the storage, uh, asbestos or asbestos waste should be packed, double packed with waterproof materials and with a certain label, cautionary label, and stored separately without mixing with other uh, disaster waste. Once it mixed together, that waste, all waste must be considered about uh, asbestos, asbestos polluted waste. So uh, even, and it may occupy a certain area, but uh, the asbestos waste must be separately uh, stored as much as possible. And for collection and transportation, yes, we need a certain care and that should be transported by normal truck with container or cover to avoid the uh, scattering of the uh, asbestos. And it is better not to use the press packer truck because pressing, I mean, the crush, crusher, uh, crushing uh, process may also generate the, the asbest, emission of asbestos. And for intermediate treatment and final disposal, uh, asbestos waste, again, asbestos waste is not suitable for recycling or even incineration still. And so that uh, only the way is the melting process or the, some solidification process. Uh, that is a common way to reduce the risk of the asbestos. And the, this technology must be implemented if they are available in the damaged country. However, if not, all the thing is that the safety disposal. And for disposal or landfill, it must be disposed of in the site that is permitted to accept in compliance with the relevant regulation or laws. I mean that the specially controlled landfill must be necessary for disposing the asbestos waste. And even in such kind of the waste landfills, the asbestos waste must be disposed separately with certain cover or containers or uh, wrapping of containers uh, to prevent scattering and to prevent to mix with other waste as well. And we need to display the cautionary level. This is the asbestos waste, or this is this area is the, the, the zone for asbestos waste, something like this. But anyway, this is not only uh, for to, to prepare uh, for the disaster situation, but the, in normal time, in normal situation, or I should say before disasters, we should develop this kind of the treatment handling scheme for asbestos waste because asbestos waste must be a common uh, issue for the hazardous waste. So of course, once we face the disaster situation, we must consider about how to treat. But important thing or essential issue must be that this kind of the reliable scheme, reliable management scheme must be established before disaster.
And this is the final part of my today's lecture. And this is about on-site identification of asbestos waste. I already mentioned about that sometimes this is very difficult to find out the existence of asbestos. But sometimes it is required to investigate on-site very quickly, but uh, we need a certain skill and equipment to do that kind of the survey. So I have raised some equipment here, and I'd like to ask the audience to think again, what is the suitable or what are the suitable equipment for on-site identification of asbestos? The A is a loop that can magnify 10 or 20 times, and you can observe using this kind of loop. The B is torch or ignition torch to burn out the building material. The C is a USB type, uh, USB connecting stereo microscope. It means that a very mobile microscope, which can magnify 100 times of the objects. D is a near infrared mobile asbestos analyzer that is focusing on finding the asbestos waste. The E is the equipment for X-ray diffraction analysis. I may ask the student as a representative of the audience, which equipment is suitable for on-site identification asbestos. I'm going to ask you, uh, and please raise your hand physically. How about the A, loop is uh, suitable for on-site identification? Anyone raise your hand? Okay, one. How about torch? Yes, person, one person. How about a stereo microscope? One person. Yes, more. Oh. And how about D? Mobile asbest analyzer. Yeah, this is very useful. Yes. Or oh, five person maybe. And how about E? X ray diffraction analysis. I cannot see all face, maybe no. Okay. Yeah, you're having very good sense to collect. But in fact, I have the answer some of this. The loop and torch is very useful in terms of the on-site identification because a 10 times or 20 times magnification is, in fact, that's enough to identify. And mobile stereoscope, stereo microscope is also useful uh, since it, it can magnify 100 times and also as well as they can recall the picture as well. And yes, near infrared mobile asbestos analyzer is also useful if you have, but uh, it's relatively expensive and this is not so much common to be distributed in all uh, municipality or in local uh, government. And even in Japan, this is not so much popular. Of course, some laboratory or university must have, but uh, in case of the, if you consider about the developing country, I cannot recommend so much, but this is very useful. Uh, quick and more precise result uh, should be come out from this analyzer. And yes, X-ray diffraction analysis is very precise uh, to qualify or even quantify the asbestos the fiber in the waste, but it needs, of course, this is expensive equipment and also requiring the skill and need a certain time to give the result. So the importance of the on-site identification would be that, the, uh, of course, the preciseness is important, but the quick result, a quick identification is most more important because there are so many huge area must be damaged by a disaster case. 
So uh, I already mentioned that there are two types of the identification. One is a simple and preliminary identification, or I should say on-site identification. And accurate identification that is in laboratory or in lab identification. And for on-site identification, it, it must be quick, uh, even if it is uh, inaccurate, but we sometimes we need a quick result. So it may include a visual observation, microscopic observation, and if you have mobile a special analyzer. And there are uh, several ways to get a certain more precise result uh, for asbestos exist existing. But today I just want to focus on on-site identification of asbestos. A key a point uh, to identify asbestos is that the bundles of fiber, bundles of fibers, this is a very basic property of the asbestos fiber. And asbestos fiber normally doesn't stand out, exist stand out. So if you see that the single fiber, this must not be asbestos. This is a bundle of fiber, so it might be asbestos. And if we use a torch to uh, uh, burn out the surface of the, the building materials, yes, even the asbestos fiber might be burned out. Not, not burned out, just burned. But this burned fiber is not uh, uh, become black, as you said, unblackened or unmelted because that is very strong to heat. So that uh, we should know that this kind of the incombustibility of the asbestos fiber uh, to identify uh, that, that to be the asbestos. And also important thing is uh, just small size of asbestos. And compared to the other uh, small fibers, uh, of course we cannot compare to hair. Uh, human hair is very, very big if it is compared to the asbestos. But sometimes it is confusing to the grass wool. Uh, but to compare about the size, grass wool is still enough big, uh, bigger than the asbestos fiber. So if we, if we have a certain loop or microscope, uh, we can easily identify the asbestos or not. Of course, I repeatedly say that if, we, if someone has a mobile asbestos analyzer, this is very useful just give the very quick result of the asbestos. And for in-lab identification, just uh, I'd like to show the result, but using the polarizing microscope or using the uh, phase, con phase contrast microscope or using the X-ray diffraction analysis, we could identify more precisely about the existence or the amount of the uh, asbestos fiber in the waste. This is uh, sometimes very useful to consider about, uh, to calculate the capacity of the treatment uh, of the asbestos. Well, just one hour passed and I am moving to the wrap up session and just I'd like to emphasize that this safe handling and appropriate treatment of hazardous disaster waste must be achieved by preparation before disaster. In normal time, we should always consider about the appropriate treatment of hazardous waste, and it may lead to the appropriate management of hazardous disaster waste. It may include that the collection of the information of the distribution of the potential hazard. If we talk about asbestos waste, uh, the identification of the building that may use the asbestos materials is the this part, collecting, collection of the information and distribution. And also development or the expansion of the treatment capacity or disposal capacity uh, for the hazardous waste must be also considered in normal time before disaster. So it may also uh, contribute uh, for smooth treatment, smooth management of the hazardous disaster waste as well as the preparation of the equipment, safety gear and some uh, transportation truck, 
all the some wrapping materials, containers, all of these equipment must be necessary to be prepared in the, uh, before disasters. And, but I repeatedly say that uh, this is uh, sometimes uh, there is a uh, problem is the lack of the capacity of the treatment. And this kind of local vulnerability against the disaster and against the ha handling of the hazardous waste must be also identified and try to solve these relevant uh, problems or issues as much as possible before disaster situation. So if we know that the certain weak point of the self vulnerability on the hazardous waste handling, so that we can also ask to support uh, from the out so outside, I mean, all the ex uh, some international cooperation agency uh, to help that or to resolve that kind of the situations. Okay, that's all my, uh, uh, my lecture. And just now I realized that the, some a question already comes. But anyway, this is end of my lecture. Thank you very much. And I'd like to move on to the uh, question and answer session, if possible. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you very much. Ishigaki sensei. Thank you. So we have uh, two questions in our Q and A uh, from the audience. Yes. So the first one is from uh, Mr. Abiodun Afolabi again. He asks, "Is it possible to recycle asbestos waste material at such levels that will reduce its health and environmental impact? If yes, what methods or techniques available for developing countries in Africa, for example?" Uh, is he asking the recycling of the asbestos waste? I'm sorry, I yes. couldn't catch you. Ah, so okay. If, uh, if he's asking if we can, he's asking if we can uh, recycle asbestos uh, such that it can reduce the health and environmental impact. So if there is such a method, uh, uh -huh. is there something that's suitable for developing countries, like for example, countries in Africa? I don't recommend the recycling of asbestos because it is uh, too dangerous. And also asbestos, it, it, uh, virgin asbestos is still uh, very cheap, available in very cheap price so that the recycling is very difficult. But I mean, I recommend to remove asbestos uh, not to mix with other waste because it will increase the value of the removed waste, not for asbestos side. The once waste that is already removed asbestos, we can regard it as a desert waste must be the asbestos free waste. And so that we can uh, consider about much about recycling of these waste. And I don't recommend to recycle of the asbestos itself. Of course, it can be utilized again as asbestos. So if the, they can uh, remove or collect uh, very pure asbestos, it might be utilized for generate uh, to produce uh, uh, recycled asbestos uh, materials. But I think I, uh, it cannot pay uh, in terms of the economy. I mean, that it, it, this is not so much a reasonable way to produce the material. Thank you very much, Sensei. Uh, we have another question from Mr. Uh, Glenn Fernandez. Uh, he asks, are there materials that are commonly mistaken as asbestos? That's the question. Uh, 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 sorry, I, I, I couldn't get well about that. Can you repeat again? So, uh, Mr. Glenn Fernandez hmm. is asking if there are other materials uh, that are actually not uh, not asbestos, but people mistaken them as asbestos. Uh, the major materials is the grass fiber that I already mentioned. That is sometimes considered to be uh, mistaken 
with the asbestos. Can you see this one? Glass wool. And this is also used for the building materials and almost the same purpose as well as asbestos. But the, yeah, in, in sometimes it, it should be a mistaken, misunderstood to be asbestos. But once we see that the difference of the size, we can easily identify. Uh, also, uh, Ishigaki Sensei, uh, there uh, is some questions in the chat that's okay. uh, in Japanese. So okay. perhaps uh, you could uh, answer them. <laughs> uh, okay. We could have somebody translate it. Sorry, I am now in, in trying to find time, out that. We can have Are you talking about the Zoom chat? Yes, in the Zoom uh, chat to the panelists, uh, there is a question that is in Japanese. えっと、石渡は yeah, you're right. Uh, I think he's asking about the, some some very strict regulation for using or controlling the hazardous materials may uh, reduce the risk of the hazardous substance, especially in disaster waste. Yes, uh, yes, you're right. And I, I, I totally agree with that. But together with that, of course, as best, it is well known about uh, uh, the, uh, the hazard of asbestos, I mean the health hazard. But together with that, this is still uh, used in some country because they still don't have the certain alternative material or alternative substances uh, to to be uh, or to be alternative to the asbestos so there are no way to find out the other materials in this case they are still using the asbestos but uh, this is a sometimes same issue has been ha happen for the some kind of the pops or chemicals or other materials. Of course, that is a certain, have certain toxicity, but uh, it is also allowed to use because, because of the certain benefit to using that material, okay, substances as well. And I hope that asbestos is, is, has a strong, and, and maybe it, it is uh, some kind of the materials to be controlled uh, very soon. I mean, the high should have such a priority. Uh, and, and I hope that, uh, of course, that should be combined with the development of the alternative materials, especially uh, usable or distributable in the developing country. So not only to control the material or the substances, but the technology development must be also needed. Yes, he has pointed very important part. And thank you very much. Uh, I think in the interest of time, should uh, this be all? Because we don't have any more audience questions and okay. uh, we don't have any questions in the chat either. If so, uh, I'd like to close my lecture. I hope all of you enjoy and satisfy this lecture. Okay. So oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for all audience and especially a special thanks to the student from Kyoto University to joining this lecture. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank you. Three, two, one.